Hello again, Nicole Mashburn, and we're going to continue our special senses by talking about the ear and equilibrium. Okay, so we've already talked about the ear and its role in hearing, but it also plays a role in equilibrium. Uh, and not only equilibrium, but orientation, so it allows us to know where we are in space. Okay, so uh, this equilibrium is a coordination between your balance and your orientation in space. So you, you kind of know where you are and you don't have a dizzy feeling. How do we maintain knowing where we are without feeling dizzy? Um, you have the part of the ear that does this is in the vestibular part of the ear and also the semicircular canals, okay? And so the vestibular receptors, uh, which has two chambers, the saccule and the utricle, they monitor static equilibrium. So that's orientation. So if your head's bent to the right or left or forward or back. Your semicircular canal receptors, okay, they monitor dynamic equilibrium, which is motion or rotation, okay? So just to review your anatomy, so for equilibrium and or, uh, orientation, we're talking about the inner ear, but we're not talking about the cochlea, okay? We're only talking about the vestibule, all right? So this area here and the semicircular canals, here, here, and here. And in particular, we're talking about this region called the utricle, and this region called the saccule. And we're gonna talk about the uh, little receptors inside each one of these areas. So what you see in purple, this is what we're gonna talk about. These purple things, this is where the actual equilibrium and orientation receptors are found. All right, so these dense areas of receptors are called the macula when you're talking about uh, static equilibrium or orientation. And these are found in the utricle and the saccule. So these are the receptors, the sensory receptors for orientation found in those two chambers of the ventricle, not the ventricle, the vestibule, sorry. I've been doing heart anatomy this week as well. <coughs> uh, you have one uh, grouping of receptors in the saccule wall and one group of receptors in the utricle wall. Uh, and these are gonna allow you to monitor the position of your head in space. Uh, they do respond to linear forces, so like moving forward and back, but not rotation, okay? Uh, they contain hair cells, just like your gustatory hair cells, uh, your hair, the hair cells that we talked about before, we talked about hair cells with hearing. Well, equilibrium also ha uses hair cells. And these hair cells, uh, these stereocilia and kinocilia, are embedded in an otolithic membrane that has little otoliths and that literally means ear rocks, odo ear lith rock, made up of calcium carbonate. So the, you have these little ear rocks floating around inside the uh, utricle and saccule. So this is what this looks like. So you have this, these little purple areas that I'm showing you. This is blown up. Here's that membrane and here are the ear rocks, okay, the otoliths. Here are your support cells that kind of hold all of it together. And these are your sensory cells. So you have your hair cells here. All these are hair cells. And you can see the little cilia, the stereocilia, and the kinocilia. So they're embedded inside that gel. And as that gel moves back and forth, these rocks will cause those hairs to bend. And as they bend, that will cause the hair to be activated and send a signal, which will be picked up by these uh, vestibular nerve fibers, carried to the vestibular nerve, and then to the brain. So to activate these receptors in the macula, you have to bend those stereocilia. And that can cause depolarization of the hair cells, which will release a neurotransmitter and then generate an action potential, which will then be traveling to the vestibular nerve. And so depending on which stereocilia is activated, our brain can take that information and allow us to know uh, which position our head is in. So you can see as you bend your head to the left or right, the little rock will cause those hair cells to bend and that's how you activate those cells and you know where you are in space, right or left, or forward or back. Um, some people that experience vertigo, uh, these little ear rocks are kind of moving or they're out of place and they're bending the cells uh, even though the head's not moving. So the rocks are causing the little uh, hair cells to bend but you're not moving. Your brain doesn't really process that correctly and it makes you feel dizzy. So people who have vertigo sometimes have a problem uh, with these otoliths being out of place. 
All right, so how do you know if you're rotating? Okay, so dynamic equilibrium. And this occurs in those semicircular canals in something called the crista ampullaris, these little purple areas, and then this is uh, blown up for you. And uh, there's um, an ampulla in, in, in each semicircular canal. So I've blown this up so that you can see it. And inside this area, you have what's called a cupola. And inside that cupola, you have these little hair cells, little hair bundles. So again, you have these little cilia, uh, just like you did before. And um, as these um, hair cells form this structure, it's surrounded by endolymph, okay? So as these hair cells are kind of moving in that endolymph, as they bend, just like the other cells we just talked about, as they bend, they will also fire and generate a signal. So I'm going to show you, uh, or talk to you a little more about how that works. Um, these crista, they respond to changes in velocity, and I'm talking about rotation. So as, um, as you're spinning, that endolymph starts to spin around that cupola and starts to cause those hair cells to bend. And the bending of those hair cells can cause depolarization, again, the release of a neurotransmitter, which will then give you an action potential to the vestibular nerve, and that will go to the brain, and the brain knows that you're rotating. Okay, so now the brain can figure out that you're, you're spinning. This is a really cool slide to kind of give you a little bit more visualization about that. So as you're at rest, standing straight up, the cupola is upright, okay? As you start to spin, the endolymph starts to move as well, and it starts to flow. And so as that endolymph is flowing, okay, inside the semicircular canals, it starts to bend those hair cells, all right? Firing those nerves, and that way your brain knows that you are then um, rotating. Once you stop, the endolymph will keep um, moving, in the, it'll keep moving, and then it'll kind of stop and go in the other direction, bending the hair cells in the opposite direction, and that allows you to know that you're stopping. Um, there can be just a little bit of a lag time between uh, your, you stopping your rotation and becoming at rest when the endolymph is still flowing, and that's when you kind of get that dizzy feeling because the hair cells are still bending and you're not moving. So that can give you that dizzy feeling. All right, so it takes more than just your ears to let you know where you are. Uh, so how do we process equilibrium and orientation? Well, it takes your vestibular receptors, it takes your visual receptors, and it also takes somatic receptors, receptors in your skin, in your muscle, in your joints. All of these come together uh, and they join in with your cerebellum and your uh, vestibular nuclei and your brain stem. So as all this input comes from your ears, your eyes, your somatic receptors into your brain, the output to your, to your body, okay, are things that allow you to stabilize, okay? So to keep your eyes fixed in, in, on, in um, one direction, to kind of orient your, give yourself orientation, to, to you know, move your neck upright. Um, the reason I bring this up is because I want you to understand the importance of all three of these in establishing where you are in space. Um, if you were to close your eyes, you could still maintain balance, okay? Um, because you can feel stretching in your body. So if you close your eyes and you kind of you can feel your your body kind of leaning to one side, you'll know to jerk back up and straighten back up, okay? So I would encourage you to pause the video and uh, stand up, uh, raise one leg, and see if you can balance. Now close your eyes, and you'll find that balance is a little more challenging with your eyes closed because you don't have a field of reference in order to uh, maintain your, uh, your balance. Um, you can uh, really see how this it comes into play with someone that, um, who is blind. They don't have that visual field. They really have to rely on their vestibular receptors and our, their somatic receptors. Uh, for sighted people, we really do rely a lot on our visual receptors for our balance and orientation. So again, if you don't believe me, stand up, uh, put, uh, stand on one leg, and close your eyes, and you'll see how much tougher it is to maintain your balance on one leg, uh, standing on one leg with your eyes closed. So we do need all three of these to come together to help us figure out where we are in space. All right, so that's all I have for you today. This is the end of the Special Senses video. I appreciate your time, and thank you very much for listening.